Hey guys, this is Dan again. So I had an unexpected uh, problem last night. My An actual monsoon hit in uh, good old Phoenix, Arizona. And the power surge knocked out the electricity and my external pump decided it did not want to restart. So ended up, uh, I had a submersible and had to plumb that in last night. Uh, I was going to go to the submersible. I wanted to do some modifications on this filtration system when I uh, got the other tank going, my 210. But it uh, looks like I'm going to be doing some now. Uh, luckily, I, I always keep a spare pump. So instead of the external run off the uh, bulkhead fitting off the side of the return, I went ahead and set my submersible in there and actually um, ran this into that ball valve which is uh, actual my refugium uh, supply so I turned that one on a little bit more shut off my main pump ball valves there and for now that's actually feeding my tank with water uh, so anyways I was gonna go to a submersible anyways I got kind of tired of the uh, plumbing outside the tank possible chance for external leaks uh, haven't had that much more reliability. That's about my third little giant pump in about six years. Um, the submersible pump that I'm running on my other tank right now has been in there for about two years. And I had a, I've had good reliability with the submersibles, so I'm actually, I'm not going to be buying another external pump. I'm going to go ahead and go with a, a submersible on this. So all these plumbing plans that I was going to wait until I was done with my other system is uh, going to happen today. So we'll get to it. Okay, so after going to the hardware store again, went to Lowe's, got a bunch of PVC and stuff. Um, I love using these unions because they allow me to pre-build this section and time it to wherever I need it to be. So this is how this is gonna go. I'm gonna cut that three quarter inch right there. That's gonna, union, um, that's gonna glue up to that. Then I've got my uh, union here, and I added a couple extra ball valves is what these are going to be. And this is basically going to sit like that. Uh, give me some other options. It's going to go a little farther back. So if I need to run any other uh, pressures to anything, I've got them. And then that's just going to run along the side of the tank right there. And then my hose from my submersible pump will hook up into that hose bar. Um, all my PVC I just cut with my miter saw again, especially if it's bigger than three-quarter. Those PVC cut cutters work great, but once you get up past one inch, it seems like they don't always cut straight. So I just cut everything on the miter saw. Okay, so after I dry fit everything, I actually set all my T's on a table and I mark them. So that tells me I'm straight up and down when I put these things together. I just use a dry erase marker because that will rub right off again. All right, guys, so... I use uh, this clear cleaner instead of a primer because I don't like the look of the purple primer all over my PVC and my plumbing. Uh, this stuff seems to work really well. And then just regular uh, medium clear cement. So. Clean that really good. Really wasn't planning on having to do this right now, but that is why it's so critical that if you have a reef tank, that you have an extra pump that you can put on there. If I wouldn't have had that pump, uh, you know, if it was a Sunday and stores weren't open, I wouldn't be able to get one. I would have been completely SOL and my fish would have been without a circulation in their tank and possibly would have lost some fish. So uh, super critical, my advice is to get a spare, a spare pump. It doesn't have to be as powerful as your other ones but just so you got something that you can put on that tank if this stuff happens. Okay, so I always, especially normal PVC, you apply the glue on both sides. When I'm doing this stuff, I only put it on the uh, stuff that's sliding into. That way I don't get any extra residue inside my, my piping.
push that together. Now I did rub a little bit of my uh, timing mark off there, but I can still see enough where I know I'm going to be good. Next one here. And this cleaner, like I said, I've been using this stuff for about six years, and it just looks so much better instead of having that purple possibly uh, come out and show on the outside of your fittings. Okay, so I assembled my, uh, my ball valve bulkhead basically. And the reason I use pipe thread a lot is because I've, I've re-plumbed a bunch of my systems. And if you slip join everything together, a lot of the times you, when you first time you go to make a modification, it's not, you know, it's junk. So I tend to try and make unions and a lot of pipe joint fittings uh, so I can reuse the stuff. So if I ever remodify this, this can come apart as an assembly and I can use it on another build. Now, if you haven't done pipe tape very much, pay attention to this because this is a lifesaver once you start doing a lot of plumbing and pipe taping. Uh, if you see how I'm holding that right there, okay, through the finger thumb, tape's coming off this way, okay? Let me do this one first. Hold it with your finger. Oops. That's a good representation, huh? Okay, hold it with your finger and then you can just wrap. And I like to do a good six or seven wraps on this thing. But see how fast that goes? And then you just pry it off of there. You know, I've seen guys pulling a big chunk off and trying to do it, and man, this thing is just amazing. So you hold it with your finger, put it around there, and you just unwrap the roll. This saves you so much time, and it breaks off nice. You just leverage against it, break it off nice and smooth. I'll show you one more time. Since I gotta do this one too, hold it with that finger, get started. Once you get over it, you can take your finger off, wrap it, snap it off. Okay, so since I, you know, shut off my ball valves, I removed my pump. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cap this uh, drain that I had set up for the external pump. I'm, I put a PVC cap so I don't have to drain this whole container, the return reservoir here. I put a PVC cap on that. Then I opened my ball valve here, drained all the water. So I should be able to take this off and not have too much leakage so I can get my cap put on there and be done with this part. All right, so that went well. That's about all the water I drained. And man, is that filthy back there. Can you tell I haven't uh, dusted in a while? Anyways, uh, there's my piece I took out. And now we'll work on the uh, return here. So the return, uh, you know, if you're doing three quarter inch or smaller PVC, these PVC cutters are the only way to go. Uh, I've got to mark my spot here, so. All right, so I marked my uh, spot. Uh, this plumbing came out pretty good and uh, glued that one union in. Um, I didn't take a video of that actual gluing, but I just protected my tank with some towels. Uh, was really careful with my glue, making sure I didn't get it inside the tubing, and uh, waited a couple hours for it to completely dry before I started this thing back up. Uh, but this is the finished product, and uh, I'm really happy with it. I've got these just capped for now. In fact, let me shut these off, so just an extra protection, obviously. Um, so yeah, um, came across here, and actually I was I was gonna think I needed a brace, but just the uh, the hose holding this side up, it's actually quite stout. So I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty happy with it. The question will be is whether this uh, sitting over here is gonna be kind of annoying for my lids and stuff. I don't think it will be, and I don't have much option um, as far as putting along the back or something because of where it's coming through the wall. I'm not gonna take the time to, to redo that um, but overall pretty happy with it uh, and I wish I wish I would have taken a video for you guys before when this was on here and I was feeding 
through here and it was kind of coming down here and dead heading against this ball valve and having to push all the way through here you know through the wall with my temporary repair uh, because the amount of flow difference is unreal of what that is going down into my filter now that I have eliminated that and also used 45s here that's why you kind of always use 45s instead of a 90 use two 45s you get a lot more flow uh, <clears throat> than you do with a 90, just from that abrupt turn. Uh, creates back pressure, and you want as little of back pressure as you can get on your return side. So I've got two 45s there, and then I actually use hoses on my other side to feed the tank, so it's a nice gradual turn. Um, no abrupt changes. Uh, so anyways, uh, massive flow difference. And the other thing I was gonna show you guys when I was kinda cleaning up this, it looks a little nicer than it did before, you know? And, check that out and there's actually a clean floor um, when I was cleaning if you notice right here this is a uh, pieces of glass uh, so this is a do as I say not as I do I uh, I actually was when I had I had this aquarium in here and I decided to add one later this one later uh, before obviously not this aquarium uh, because I shattered the last one into a million pieces so I don't remember, I don't know whether I had it set up there and because this was a couple years back, but uh, I tried drilling a hole and I actually had water in this tank, believe it or not. Uh, I think what it was is I hadn't done an overflow. So I had my main drain in uh, and I wanted to drill an overflow because I hadn't drilled an overflow and I already had it filled with water. So I was like, eh, I'll just drill a hole right here. And uh, I taped off the inside, had the water down to about this level. Um, and I'll show you how to drill, uh, drill the glass on my next video of my algae scrubber tank that I'm in process of right now. But uh, I started drilling a hole and uh, I got about 90 wave percent through the glass and that thing shattered. Uh, 55s are usually tempered glass on the face, just so you know. Um, I did not know that at the time. So I got about 90 wave percent through drilling that glass and it just shattered. And I wish I would have had a video of that because it's really cool to see. Not at the time that it happened though because I had about 30 gallons of water and shattered glass all over this entire room. I had obviously protected my uh, lower tank with towels and whatnot, but uh, yeah, that just reminded me of that when I was cleaning it up. Figured I'd share that with you. Make sure your glass is untempered before you drill it because uh, it doesn't go well. And luckily the wife wasn't home, uh, but once she figured it out, she read me the riot, riot act for uh, trying to drill a tank that was full of water, which I knew better, but uh, didn't want to take the time to drain it. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Um, this wasn't the funnest project I've done because uh, it was rather unexpected for me, but uh, overall, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. And uh, we'll see you on that algae scrubber tank, hopefully. Let me know if you like it. Subscribe. Um, there's going to be a lot to come, guys. Um, thanks. We'll see you next time.